So in addressing impurities, um, obviously there's a chemistry component, which is extremely important. Uh, but I'm going to be stressing the safety component uh, today. And it's really both the chemistry and safety um, aspects that need to kind of work hand in hand and together you know, in, in qualifying impurities. It's, it's definitely a partnership. What triggers a qualification or a safety assessment, if you will, of a particular impurity is um, a threshold, as we all know. Small um, as we all know, uh, thresholds with regard to qualification, if, you, if uh, maximum daily dose is less than or equal to two grams per day, a typical threshold is 0.15% or one milligram per day, uh, whichever is the lowest. That triggers a qualification. So when you do the qualification, your um, acceptance criteria for that could be 0.3%, for example, um, if you can qualify the, the impurity with regard to the safety of that impurity. So it can be higher, threat, um, your, your specifications can be higher. So qualification, um, just the definition, which is in the guidance, is acquiring and evaluating data to establish the safety of the impurity. And this a qualified impurity is impurity that's dosed safely in humans at the therapeutic dose of the API, or therapeutic dose of the drug. The, and also, say for so new drug products also have their own thresholds. Again, there's a threshold for qualification, um, identification, uh, knowing the structure of the impurity, and then just reporting the uh, impurity threshold. And I'm not going to go into the, the specifics on the percents, um, but uh, just to suffice that they're different um, depending on not just whether it's the product or whether it's the um, drug substance but also what stage you're at in, in development. And here, of course, uh, with regard to products, especially degradation products, which is a big thing with new drug products, uh, fourth degradation is going to give you an idea of what impurities to look for uh, early on. Um, getting to the, uh, I'll spend some time on this because there seems to be a lot of interest already in the group with regard to threshold and early development. The, uh, there's a working group, um, it's basically a science-based organization consortium that's involved with bringing science um, and, and regulation within the pharmaceutical industry. It's an international group. They have a GMP early development working group, probably a lot of you know of this group. Um, a lot of big pharma uh, folks are part of this group. But they do have a white paper out on uh, specifications. And here I just kind of copied some of the, the top part of the, uh, one of the tables of the white paper, just to give you an idea of all the different things that they're looking at right now, which is, which is quite a few uh, different aspects. And they're, they're, they're covering the chiro, impurities, residual solvents. Uh, um, and, and one of the things I do want to highlight here is that um, what we've just been talking about, um, impurities, degradation products, or impurities, they're proposing basically three times the ICH threshold for identification and for and for qualification. Again, um, uh, these are these may seem liberal, but early on they're probably not that liberal. Again, um, percent, uh, um, I've seen as well uh, early on. But this is sort of probably going to be the new norm as uh, this this information um, starts to get out there and get disseminated um, and discussed. And probably at some point, I would guess, would be a guidance the next step here. But uh, it is a group that's trying to deal with these early development uh, issues, so that it's much more broader. This, they're really also just applying this right now to phase one and phase two A uh, clinical program, and not beyond that right now. I want to also give the sub-team, there's another real, very good table in this white paper uh, that the uh, sub-team put together, the kids that, that lists examples of, um, of different types of, of scenarios. And one of the scenarios I want to point you guys to is the, this impurity D scenario, where in this case, none of the impurity was in any of the enabling toxicology studies. Uh, so the impurity was not present, but it is present in the clinical lot, and it's up to 0.42%. Um, in this particular case, 
this impurity was not even ID um, early on. So when, you, when they found it was 0.2 percent, again, I don't know how they got the point. What's that percentage? But it would be in that particular lot was the fact that um, <coughs> excuse me that they did not have to qualify because it wasn't at the 0.5 percent level. Um, so it's very different. And also they had, but they did uh, um, have to identify, uh, one would have to identify what that impurity is. So um, this is very different uh, criteria versus the marketed criteria. But again, the qualification of the impurity at that threshold trigger um, and what you do is going to be pretty much the same. Um, and that's really what I want to focus the presentation on. So here's a decision tree that's in uh, Q3A for purity qualification. And, and I know we've all seen uh, this or, or a form of this um, pathway. One of the things I do want to bring up is that um, the, uh, the highlights here are the areas where it's really uh, the toxicologist uh, would need to do some sort of risk assessment safety evaluation. So it's quite a bit um, along these pathways, it's, it's quite important that the, the toxicologist is involved uh, with regard to qualification. So if you did, um, if there was a particular period that did hit your ID threshold, and again, that threshold changes where you are in development, um, the structure's been identified, it's really up to the uh, toxicologist to know whether there's any human risks to, from that structure. Very important too with regard to genotoxic impurities if there is any sort of moiety there that's been associated with genetic toxicology at all. Um, if you are greater than the qualification threshold, what information is there and is additional information needed to qualify that impurity? And also, once that information uh, is available, then it's really assessing the, the, the clinical relevance for any adverse effects because the adverse effects you'll see will be in animals, then how does that translate into the uh, human situation? And then, in the end, is that qualified or not at the given specification uh, for that for that period? 